Hey everyone, welcome to Rose's Year of One. Last year's project was Rose Stops Buying Stuff. It was my no buy budget year. I had my no buy, fairly self explanatory, and I had my budget that I lived off of every single month. So I have done wrap up videos. The way it worked, I ended up talking about my no buy wrap up in my Makeup Rehab 2020 wrap up. So if you want to hear more about my no buy, how that progressed, how I felt about it, and hear me reflecting on it then check out my makeup rehab and no buy wrap up video and if you want to hear about my budget and my overall spends for the year and things check out my last video which was my 2020 money diary video so if you've watched those videos you know that what i did last year has really informed this year's project and the way that i'm going to be structuring it and the way that i am doing things after doing a no buy year in 2020 i knew i wasn't going to do another no buy year at least not straight away. I do feel at this moment in time that it's something I might revisit. Maybe maybe not quite next year. Depend, I don't know. It depends how this year goes. Maybe next year. Maybe the year after. I do feel like another no buy year is something I want to attempt. Because I feel like 2020 was just not a typical year. And I feel like that skewed me being able to process some of the things that I wanted to try and process during my no buy year. So it is something that I, at the moment, do think I will potentially revisit in the future. However, I never envisioned myself doing two no buy years in a row. I don't think that's a particularly sustainable thing. I, I feel like it's such a massive thing to stop buying absolutely everything. And there are things that I feel like I need to buy this year in a very loose sense of need to buy so obviously with my no buy i was allowed essentials but i was very very strict with myself and my no buy about what essentials were and i was allowed replacements but again i was very strict on really genuinely needing to replace something before i allowed myself to replace it and i feel like having a little bit of leeway this year is just going to let me replenish certain things that are maybe not at the absolute end of their viable life but that are well past their best so I feel like I do need that breathing year and that is what this year is about however I also knew I was never going to go from doing a no buy year and doing something as sort of strict as that to just thinking that that had completely changed my whole approach to shopping especially not with 2020 working out the way it did I don't feel like it did change my approach in practice as much as I wanted it to do because there were so many restrictions placed on my shopping behaviours that were not placed on by me that were put in place by the government because of the coronavirus situation. I knew it was never going to be a case of I've learned all I need to know within this no buy year and I can now just go back to shopping completely freely without structure and the way I was before because even during my no buy year and I talked about this in that wrap up video when I did get those little breaks, particularly towards the end of the year when I was doing things like my Christmas shopping for other people, I very quickly fell into the habits again of wanting to shop. And in terms of my budget last year, I again talked about how easy it was after the first lockdown had ended to just start spending money again really quickly, even though I'd been out of that habit for three months because of the first lockdown. So I knew from that and I think I knew going into it anyway that I was never going to finish my no buy year and start this year as a free-for-all. It was always going to be another project although I probably always knew I was going to do another project I didn't know how last year was going to inform this year's project until last year was was done basically. My no buy from last year is being replaced with my year of one and my budget from last year is an element that I am taking forward. So I will still be budgeting this year but the way that I am setting out my budgeting is slightly different and what I'm going to do is discuss the budget side of the year first because I think there's things that maybe need explained in that before I go on to say what my year of one is in terms of the consuming aspect of my year. Let's get into my budget. <laughs> Continuing from last year, I am going to have a budget of £250 a month. One of the things that is staying the same from last year is that that will roll forward if I don't spend it. I did consider slashing my budget a little bit this year and I think that is something I would like to do is slash my budget because I feel like £250 a month was fine when I was not shopping 
but I feel like now that I'm going to be introducing shopping again the overall spend of my months are going to obviously go up and I'm not sure that I'm comfortable with how much money that will mean that I am spending and obviously I won't really know until the end of the year what those figures look like but I do feel like my overall monthly spend is something I probably want to start controlling going forward and I think in terms of living my the majority of my life on the budget um, it is maybe bringing it down to around the £200 mark is maybe what I would like to do in the future. However, this year I am adding different things into my budget that were not from my budget last year. So the first big change there is replacements. Last year replacements I was allowed to buy freely. I did track them so I went through that in my money diary wrap up and looked at how much I'd spent on replacements but this year replacements are going to come from my budget. So although the budget amount has stayed the same, instantly it's going to need to stretch. Last year I spent over a thousand pounds on replacements. So if I look at having a 250 pounds a month budget, then over 12 months my yearly budget is 3000 pounds. Now if I was to spend the same as I spent last year on replacements, which was for simplicity's sake, let's call it a thousand pounds because it was around about the thousand mark, that instantly takes £1,000 off of that and gives me £2,000 of a budget to live off of. Last year I had the same budget and I spent all but £100 of it. I think over the year I was about £100 under without taking replacements out of my budget. Instantly this year by adding replacements in and saying they have to come from my budget, I'm in a way already slashing my budget. Does that make sense? Because my practical spending this year, if it's to accommodate even if I, if it's to accommodate my replacements, needs to be cut automatically in terms of what was coming from my budget before. And my replacements, I think this year will be much more budget driven because of that. So that's the first big change this year is that replacements will be counted from my budget. The other thing that's changing this year in terms of the way it's set out, and it's not an overall change in what it is, it's just a change in the way that it's set out, is that last year I had one column for experiences and services and I've talked quite in depth about this in terms of the amount of money last year in particular I think the majority of my budget went on experiences and services and a lot of that was beauty services so this year I have broken that category down into four columns that I'm going to track individually the first of those is beauty services so hairdressing, getting my nails done, getting waxing done, getting my eyebrows done. In case it's not very obvious, I have decided during this current lockdown to just let my eyebrows grow out so that when I go to get them done post lockdown, they are kind of in their sort of most full grown in shape because I feel like last year I tried to maintain my eyebrows as we went along and it just, by the end of the year, they were, they were not so much sisters as they were like, you know, very distant step cousins. Um, so yeah, I'm just leaving my eyebrows alone in this current lockdown, so I will look a bit like Wolverine, but it is what it is. Um, anyway, back to the budget, so beauty services are the first column from that one. And the second column is beauty service replacement items. So this was something that I actually didn't foresee myself buying last year, so this was really informed by the pandemic, is that last year I was on my no buy, so and it, it's quite funny because actually until I'd started considering it like this, um, the likes of last year I would have bought like razors or like hair removal cream or whatever and I would have probably just picked them up in my supermarket shop if the truth be told. And I never even thought about putting them in as a budget item because it was just the kind of standard thing to buy. But actually buying those things is saving me money from paying for waxing for example like so hair removal is one of the most sort of straightforward ways to phrase it and then last year I ended up buying my Davines Alchemic Colour Conditioner which I wouldn't have bought because I think I do think of it or I did think of it as a hair conditioner and I had other hair conditioners so when I started the year last year that would have not been something I foresaw myself from buying because my rule last year was my no buy, I could only buy replacement items if I totally run out of a category of things. And last year I was seeing that hair mask and that, that hair conditioner 
as being a hair conditioner that I had multiples of so I thought I have to work my way through my conditioner stash before I'm going to be replacing this but because it has that coloured element to it and it deposits colour in your hair I ended up buying it because I couldn't get to the hairdresser during lockdown and it was a way of me maintaining my colour myself at home without spending the money on the hairdresser. So that was obviously prompted initially because I couldn't get to the hairdresser but that is something I've decided to work into my budget this year is beauty service replacement items. So I will be freely allowed to buy things that replace services that I would pay for. So like teeth whitening products, um, hair dye, uh, any tools that I need to do my nails, anything like that that I would be buying but that I am buying to do at home myself a job that I would pay to get done as a service is going to be tracked within that column. The third column then is miscellaneous services. So that is any services that I'm sort of paying for that are not beauty services. Now the only thing I can kind of at the moment foresee me maybe paying for is that I quite, I've got a couple of shoes and bags that I'd like to send off to the rest of the day to get you know, rehealed or resold or re-dyed or whatever it is. I can't particularly think about anything else I would be using as a service, but I'm sure something will come up over the course of the year. So miscellaneous services is the third column there. And then the fourth column is experiences. And experiences are things like theatre tickets, entry fees, things that are experiences, basically. So services and experiences from last year, this year has expanded to be four columns of my budget that I will be tracking individually. Another change from last year's budget is that last year I had socialising as a column and I had food on the go as a column. And how that broke down was that socialising was any money I spent socialising. So if I went out for dinner, for example, with friends, that came from the socialising budget, but food on the go was kind of almost a misleading term in that it was really food that I was eating on my own. And um, so if I went out for dinner myself, that came from that column or if I bought a takeaway to eat in the house that came from that column. So this year I have changed that. Spoke again in my wrap up video about how what I really wanted to tackle with that was the amount of food that I buy at work which I should be bringing from home. So I have changed those columns this year to be a column for eating out. So even if I eat out on my own it will come from eating out because I don't, I'm perfectly happy to take myself out for dinner or to order a takeaway that is like a nice experience for food with me because I love food, big part of my life. Um, so I'm not bothered about, well I'm not not bothered about it because it's coming from my budget so obviously it's going to be a controlled spend but I don't begrudge the money basically is what I mean for food that I eat out even if I eat it on my own. What I do want, what I am bothered about and what I do want to control is work lunches because I should be bringing them from home and I'm just a bit too good about going for a burrito or going to Subway or whatever it is. And the other thing, I've been in work in January so I can, spoiler alert for my January money diary, I can say I've started spending money on work lunches again and it's been adding up. Is that I feel like in my head I think, oh it's just a meal deal from Sainsbury's or whatever which is like £3 or three fifty, but it's not because I'm not buying a meal deal. I'm buying a meal deal then buying like a six pack of Diet Coke on the side, then like another packet of crisps or even, or even if I'm buying something healthy like fruit or whatever. It all adds up. I never just, I never make it out of the shop having only spent three pounds or three pounds fifty. I've always spent like eight or nine pounds by the time I'm checking out, even if all I've gone in for is a meal deal. It's never just the meal deal. And quite often I'm actually not even doing a supermarket lunch but I am buying lunch from, as I said, like Subway or like going for a burrito or whatever it is, which is then like somewhere between 10 and 15 pounds for what I'm viewing as a work lunch, like something that I'm going to eat at my desk. Like it's not an experience. It's not like eating food that I'm, I, I mean, I do enjoy it. I don't mean I don't enjoy it, but it's not the equivalent of going out for dinner. And I'd rather go out for dinner once a week than have lunch out at work five days a week. So this year we've got eating out and work lunches in two separate columns and that's replacing the socialising and food on the go columns from last year. In terms of socialising, 
my socialising tends to be eating out so most of it will still be in the same column but it means as well if I'm socialising by going to the theatre or something um, that would then come in the experiences column for paying for my ticket hoping theatres will be open at some point in 2021, fingers crossed. In 2020 I had books as a column, that column has stayed this year but I have changed the name of it. So this year that column is called Entertainment. Last year I allowed myself my Netflix, Disney Plus and Audible subscriptions not just freely, they didn't need to come from my budget. This year they have to come from my budget so that's another big change as well as bringing in replacements I'm bringing in all those streaming services. They're coming under entertainment and um, the other thing that I'm paying from entertainment is a my Patreon subscription. I only have one um, but I am a Patreon of a Lena from Just Kiss My Frog on YouTube so that's also coming from my entertainment budget and also from my entertainment budget will be any books so I am going to continue allowing myself to buy books or audiobooks this year but they will still be tracked but they will be tracked now under the entertainment column and also anything this wasn't something I foresaw myself spending a lot of money on last year but I ended up buying quite a few films on Amazon last year to watch um, so I had Amazon Prime last year which I have not renewed yet for this year so I don't, we'll see if, if I start renewing it, it'll be coming out of entertainment. But I, I had Amazon Prime, so I had all those free things to watch on Amazon Prime last year. And I ended up still spending money buying certain films to watch if they weren't available on Prime or on Netflix or whatever. Um, so if I do anything like that, that will also come from entertainment. So those things will be things that I am free to buy, but they have to come from my budget. The last two columns on this year's budget that are new are tools for hobbies. That is in case I decide to take up any hobbies this year. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I think this is one of those things where do you know when you think about doing something but thinking about doing it and fancying doing it and actually doing it are very different. Um, but I quite fancy getting into dressmaking. Um, I feel like there's been a real upsurge in that in the last few years so it's probably just me being um, you know led by the crowd. Um, but I follow quite a few people on YouTube who like make their own clothes particularly like people who like vintage fashion that reproduce vintage style clothing themselves and um, my friend Jill's actually got really into it like in real life as well recently and it's something I am quite interested in. So I own a sewing machine already but if I decide to get into that I don't have any sewing materials. I have a sewing machine in the loft, it's not something I'm using. So if I wanted to buy you know, material or patterns, um, you know, wh whatever I would need for that, I could buy it but it would need to come from my budget. So that is tools for hobbies, that's what that's to allow me to buy, but to buy again in a controlled way, it's coming from my budget so that it's not going to be some kind of crazy thing that spirals out of control because I know myself, I get very enthusiastic about things and I spend quite a lot of money buying things and then quite often a lot of those things sit unused. So tools for hobbies is to allow myself for that and if I want to make any purchases for my YouTube channel I can also do that this year from my budget. So last year I did have technology as an exception to my no buy, I was allowed to buy that because technology is not somewhere that I sink a lot of money into, it's not something I'm that interested in. But one of the things I would really like is a directional microphone because I feel like the sound quality, or like I just use my camera, so the sound quality is not great on my videos. I don't make any money on YouTube basically, um, so it's not like I can justify buying it as like a business cost or anything. Like if I decide to buy it, I would just be buying it to increase what I, to increase the quality of my videos which is something I want to do because I do enjoy doing this but this is a hobby for me, it doesn't pay my bills, it doesn't even come close. Um, although I've monetized my videos, like I didn't even, I didn't get paid anything last year, in an entire year I didn't even meet, there's like a minimum threshold um, that you need to meet before they'll pay out and I didn't even meet that last year so Hopefully I will make, I think it's like, it's around £60, like it's not a lot of money and it would be nice to get that at some point this year, but I mean £60 of AdSense wouldn't even pay 
for a microphone. Um, so I am not making money out of doing this. This is just something I'm doing because I enjoy doing it. Um, so I can't really justify just pushing money into this hobby. I think because of that, that was why I was a bit, oh, like I kind of want to buy this microphone, but it's a lot of money and I'm supposed to be on a no buy. And I, I was really very strict with myself last year in my no buy. I'm a very all or nothing person and I had committed to this no buy last year. And even though I had that exception in place specifically so that if I wanted to buy some kind of technology for my videos, I could do that. I still felt guilty about doing it. I felt like it would be breaking my no buy. So I feel like this year I've put it into my budget and if I decide to buy that microphone or like editing software or, you know, anything like that, sort of small things obviously because they need to come from my budget. So I'm not gonna be buying like, you know, a new camera or whatever out of that budget. Um, but it gives me that leeway to buy it and feel like I'm still buying it in a controlled way, in a justified way that is not me spending money I shouldn't be spending because my budget has been worked out that I am able to spend my budget each month without it negatively impacting um, my life and my savings goals and things so the budget is there to be spent and I feel like allowing myself to buy that item but taking it from my budget will make me feel more inclined to actually buy it. So tools for hobbies is a new column then second to last column is replacements, which we've already been through. That is the biggest change this year, I would say, is bringing those replacements in. And the last column is another new one, and it is withdrawals. So my budget is going to, the same as it did last year, run over. Any unused budget at the end of a month goes, goes into the next month. However, what I found last year was that there were months that we were in lockdown that I wasn't saving that money because I was saving it, because my choices were saving it or because my behaviours were saving it. I was saving that money because I wasn't able to go out and do things. And we have started this year in a lockdown. So I don't know when that's going to end, but withdrawals are a column that I've put on that what I can do is at the end of the month, if I've got budget left over and I think like, totally honestly to myself that I have not got that budget left over because I have saved it, I can withdraw it from my budget. And what will happen with any money that I withdraw from my budget is that it'll go into my holiday money. So when I go to pay my holidays off or when I go to use my holiday money as my spending money on holiday, it will be contributed to from any money that I withdraw from my budget. It's not going to be a significant enough amount to encourage me to start being silly or drastic with my budget in a, in a way to try and move money from it into my holiday account. Um, but I feel like having that there will just encourage me to maybe think, do I want to eat lunch out today or do I want to save that £10 so that I can withdraw it to my budget? Or do I just want to save that £10 by not eating lunch out today so that I can get my hair done or so that I can get my nails done or whatever it is? I feel like last year, part of me got into the headspace particularly during the lockdown months of being like well I'm not spending any money on anything else so I'll just order a takeaway or I'll just buy books and that was obviously informed by the environment because had last year been a normal year and I, had I been socialising as much as I would have expected to socialise in a normal year and um, you know had I not been restricted from going to get my nails done as often as I would have liked to etc etc like I wouldn't have been spending in other categories the way that I was and this year I want to be able to see if those restrictions are in place and I'm not doing that spending but I make the effort to not use that as an excuse to spend elsewhere then I can withdraw that money and put it into my holiday account so that is what the withdrawals are about because what I don't want to happen is that again is that last year it almost got to a point where it felt like I wasn't really sticking to a budget sometimes because so much of my budget had rolled over during lockdown months that there were months like particularly July and August I think last year stand out as two in my memory where I went and I spent like a lot of money in a month that I didn't even make an effort to budget because I had so much rolled over and I don't want that to be the case. I want to be using this as a way to learn to budget 
so that's what the withdrawal column is about and then I have two columns on my budget that I am tracking but they're not coming from my budget same as I did last year where I had replacements self-gifting and holiday spends which I tracked even though they weren't a budget spend they were still a tracked spend so I have two tracked spends this year obviously replacements have moved over to be a budget spend I still have self-gifting which is what my year of one is about and I still have holiday spends and they both really come under the year of one so let's get into discussing what the year of one is so the year of one in the absolute simplest terms is that I can buy one thing a month this year everything that was a no buy for me last year so makeup clothing home wares whatever it is this year I'm allowed to buy one thing a month but I have to make that choice and that is the spend that will be tracked as my self-gifting and I am going to think of it as not so much buying a random thing a month as it is buying myself a gift a month like that's how I want to be thinking of it because my replacements are coming from my budget and health and safety essentials will be out with this altogether so you know if there's something that I really need and cannot go forth in life without to the detriment of my health and safety it will not be coming from my year of one or my budget so my year of one is 12 things over the course of the year one a month that I can buy and that has really been informed by last year I had my self gifting so I was allowed a Valentine's Day gift a birthday gift and a Christmas gift and I, I thought the process of how I decided what to buy for each of those was really interesting and the way that I considered other things and how I eliminated things and it was a very sort of it became quite high stakes because it was like I have this one item that I'm allowed to buy for my birthday so I need to make it a really special thing so this year I'm hoping to lower the stakes on it a little bit because I'm allowed one thing a month so it's not like this is the only thing I'm going to buy all year so it needs to be something super special so it could just be a lipstick or it could be like a pair of shoes it's not going to be budgeted spend will be tracked but it's not going to be budgeted it's just quantity restricted because what I want to do this year is really continue to use things hopefully at a quicker rate than I did last year so I've obviously again reflected all the ready in this in my makeup rehab wrap up and my inventory etc but I didn't use as much as I thought I would last year just because of the way that the pandemic happened so this year I want my focus to be on using stuff up and reducing my quantity so I'm not going to be budgeting my year of one because I'm hoping by the sheer fact that it is one item I'm allowed to buy a month it will budget itself in a way because I can only buy one thing so it's not like I'm going out and buying one thing a day it's one thing a month the other reason that it's not budgeted is because I feel like and I again already talked about this in my wrap up I feel like I didn't learn the skill of budgeting last year like I think I got started on learning it but it sort of fell apart as the year unfolded that is why I'm doing my budget again this year and I feel like I'm still waiting on my budgeting skills to be honed from that side of the project so I feel like I started budgeting last year I started learning how to budget but I don't feel like I mastered it so I feel like this year my budget and living on my budget is going to teach me about budgeting and my year of one is going to teach me about quality over quantity and because I feel like that's something that I preach and that I agree with in theory but don't always practice that is really why I've decided to go down that route and not to go down the budget route is because I don't feel I've mastered the budgeting for a start but I also don't want to have a budget and then get into the habit of trying to buy as many items as I can for that budget. I want to be buying the way that I bought my gifts to myself last year, which was things that I really wanted that prior to doing my no buy year, I would have not bought myself, but then would have spent the same amount of money. So for example, last year I bought myself shoes for two of my gifts. Um, so say for simplicity's sake they were £500 for a pair of designer shoes 
that I really wanted, that I loved. Prior to doing my no buy year, I'd have been like, oh, that's so much money spent on shoes. I can't, I can't justify it. I won't do it. Then I would have spent the same amount of money buying lots of small things, none of which I would have loved as much as if I had just bought the shoes in the first place. So that is what I really want to hold on to is that actually I can afford to buy myself one nice thing a month and I would rather buy myself one nice thing a month than 15 things that I don't like as much. Particularly, again I spoke about this in my wrap up, but when I went to Edinburgh last year, so I tracked my holiday spends, I look at what I spent in Edinburgh and it's, it's over £900, it's not quite a thousand, but it's over £900. And all I think about when I think about going to Edinburgh last year is buying my Mulberry handbag. I remember that one big item and I don't remember all the other things that I bought. And the Mulberry handbag was on sale and it counted for about £700 of the spend. So that other £200, which is a significant amount of money on its own, was spent on things that I don't even remember when I think about that holiday. So that is what I really want to not fall back into the trap of is buying all those little things that when it comes to I don't even recall off the top of my head to tell you what they were because I don't value them as much whereas my bigger purchases I think through. So that is what the year of one is about, is about making me really think through every purchase that I make. The thing as well with it not being budgeted, I feel like I'm really justifying why I've not budgeted this but I feel like a budgeted spend would have seemed maybe like the next logical progression for most people but the other aspect in terms of also feeling that I've not learned the skill of budgeting is that I do feel is that as I said I think it learned to kind of budget itself because it's capped at buying one thing a month but there's also just the realistic life budget of what I can afford to spend in a month and if I make a big purchase one month that has to be offset by not spending the same amount in the next month anyway so I feel like I'm not as worried about the budget side of it it is very much about that process of choosing that one item eliminating the other items considering things really considering them not just thinking oh I want this so I'll buy it which is pretty much that was the extent of my consideration beforehand when I was shopping was that's pretty therefore I will pick it up. So it's really about honing the whole sort of journey from seeing an item, coveting it, wanting it, considering it, considering how it will work within my life, considering it in relation to its price, whether it's going to be worth it, what the cost per wear or per use would end up being for me and um, how much it will contribute to my life. Is it and I've spoken about this before as well where I have a thing and I'm still this is still me at the moment it's something that I sort of logically think I should change but haven't really changed in practice is that I will spend more on certain things that I think are really beautiful such as a really exquisite pair of shoes or whatever but I will spend less on things that I use every day and that was partly why I did my replacements not in my budget last year because I was hoping in a sense to actually replace things with better versions last year so in terms of like uh, I had to replace a pair of jeans so I replaced my Topshop jeans with ones from Seven for All Mankind which are a denim brand that I have had before and are a higher quality denim brand so I am hoping by actually spending that little bit more on that everyday item that it will last longer whereas the Topshop ones would last me maybe like I don't know four four months or something before my thighs ate through them. It's about wanting to teach myself as well in a way that I could have 12 exquisite handbags at the end of this year in theory. I obviously couldn't because I can't afford to buy 12 designer handbags in a year. Like there's the actual realistic life budget as well that is obviously part of this but it's really weighing up do I need 12 handbags that I rotate through when I already own handbags and whatever? So say I added 12 handbags this year, like, like they would maybe all get used once every like six weeks or something. Is it worth buying that over buying, say for example, some beautiful bed linen that I'm going to sleep in every single night? It's about 
me trying to readdress that in my head as well with this year of one is by really making this considered purchase and as the year goes on ranking my purchases and ranking them by how much I love them and how excited I am about them but also by how much I've used them and really going through that process not only of deciding what item to purchase and deciding what to commit to but assessing it afterwards as well and not letting it be lost as one purchase that I made have made in a sea of purchases that could have been budgeted if I had a £200 budget for example and I bought 10 lipsticks those 10 lip I would forget them all whereas buying one item I will know that was my January item that was my February item and at the end of the year I want to be able to list off without having to think about it everything that I've bought in a year so that is really what the ethos of the year of one is about so to get into the sort of full rules and the nitty gritty of it exceptions so I've already said obviously anything essential to my health and safety will be an exception and what I will also not be counting as my year of one thing is common sense things like public transport and my travel to work things like that so my sort of daily living costs are met by not my budget my budget is for my optional living costs in a way so things like eating food out and buying books and those in entertainment and those kinds of enjoyable sides of life my essentials are not from my budget and nor are they from my year of one they will be covered by my paycheck by my main life funds i hope that makes sense <laughs> if things go back to normal and i can start driving lessons again my driving lessons are not going to count from my budget or my year of one a because driving is learning to drive is stupidly expensive and i actually don't think i could afford to take it from my budget b i just i take no joy from it i, I really don't actually i want to be able to drive but i hate driving i do think it's a it's almost coming into that essential column and i think it's a skill i need to learn because i want to buy a house not this year is totally not going to happen originally i was really hoping i'd be buying a house this year um definitely not happening hopefully maybe next year fingers crossed would be nice to be at least starting the process of seriously house hunting and being able to drive is going to hugely impact on my options for buying a house and when i buy a house like i'm going to be in that house for a while do you know what i mean so learning to drive is a pretty essential skill as much as i hate driving and i will still if possible take public transport to work or I will drive to a park and ride situation to take public transport to work. I feel like I need to be able to drive before I can buy a house. So as much as I hate driving, it is something I think I want to try and pick up again this year and hopefully actually take the test and pass it. Um, and I'm not gonna take that from my budget or my year of one if I do that. Kind of linked to driving, again I talked about this in my wrap up but if I get a new prescription of my glasses I'm not going to take replacing uh, my glasses to the new prescription from my budget or as my year of one and the other thing I will allow myself to buy without counting it as one of those items is a pair of prescription sunglasses, again particularly for driving. Um, so I don't have prescription sunglasses at the moment, I feel like it is something that I would have really benefited from this summer but actually my eye test was due in August and so during sort of height of the sunny times here I was like well there's no point in buying sunglasses if my prescription is about to change but I have still not been given a letter for my eye test so I need to actually go speak to the optician but we're in lockdown and I feel like my glasses are fine so I'm a bit like oh, is this really essential probably not but I also don't want to spend money on sunglasses that are to my current prescription if it is going to change so anyway before this gets into any more of me moaning about my terrible eyesight glasses and prescription sunglasses one of each if I buy more than one and I'm opting to buy that to have those choices they would become my item for the month that I'm choosing to buy but one of each to make sure I have the eye appropriate safety prescriptions that I need to be able to see and drive safely and go about life safely 
I'm allowed to buy. And the last thing that's going to be an exception is if I do anything with this bloody bedroom this year. Uh, it needs something done with it for definite but I just haven't decided. As I say I'm hoping to buy a house. I don't think this year is realistic and these walls desperately need painted. Paint and if I decide to replace the carpets and if I decide to get new furniture this year I'm not going to take that from my year of one or from my budget because any furniture that I buy I will take with me when I move house anyway so I feel like it's fine it's not like I'm going to buy furniture and then be sort of disposing of it if I buy it I will take it with me so I feel like furniture is an investment so if I do something with this bedroom and I buy furniture I don't need to take that from my year of one or my budget and um, this carpet really does need replaced but I'm kind of like could I live with it for another year and a bit I mean I lived with it all of last year when it needed replaced um, so I'm kind of like hmm could maybe get through it we'll see but the walls definitely need painted so if I decide to get them painted or if I decide to do wallpaper I really haven't made my mind up. Basically my bedroom will not come from my budget or my year of one um, and part of that is that I last year obviously did my no buy year so I saved money last year and I'm going to use that money towards whatever I do with my bedroom this year. I also kind of know in myself I am already thinking about moving out and I know that this situation is temporary so I feel okay about not taking it from my year of one because I don't think I'm going to make flippant decisions about it because I'm already a bit like oh, I'm taking that money to do this with and that money could be going towards my house deposit so I know I'm not going to do anything mad basically in my bedroom it's not going to become an excuse for spending thousands of pounds that I don't have it's going to be done like basically and on a budget kind of thing anyway and um, just in terms of how I feel about it so I feel like it's quite safe. What I would need to take from my year of one though is any soft furnishings that I decide to get for this year. So if I buy cushions, if I buy multiple things that I like from Oliver Bonus for my dressing table, that would count as my item for the month. Furniture, paint, wallpaper, carpet, free pass. So those are my exceptions. Holidays. So last year on my no buy I was allowed to buy things freely on holiday. This year I am not allowed to buy things freely on holiday but I am allowed to shop a little bit more on holiday. I am going to allow myself one thing for every night of the holiday so if I am on a four day three night break I am allowed three things. So I am allowed one thing per night of a holiday stay. The other thing is that any holidays I go on have to be counted as an item in and of themselves. So if I decide to book to go on holiday then the month that I pay that holiday off that is that month's spend. So at the moment I have got two holidays booked for this year, fingers crossed depending obviously if I get to go on them or not and that's why they're coming off as the item when I pay them because at the moment I've paid deposits and things might get rearranged or moved depending on travel restrictions so that is partly why I'm not paying them as my item when I book them kind of thing. So I don't know if those holidays are going to even go ahead because obviously last year all my travel plans pretty much get cancelled but the holidays themselves count as an item. So any holidays that I go on, if I go on three holidays this year that is three months items that I have taken out of being able to use to buy other things and when I go on holiday I'm allowed one purchase for each night of the holiday. So it will be controlled and it'll be controlled by quantity. That's how we're treating holidays this year. Now the next point is that my budget covers replacements, books and entertainment, tools for hobbies and beauty service replacement items such as hair dye. But where my year of one could bolster my budget is that I could use my one item for a month to pay for a service or a replacement item but count it as my one item for the month rather than taking the money from my budget. So say for example my budget was really quite lean but I really wanted to like get my hair done for example, I could say right I've paid my hair this month as my one item so paying for my hair to get done was my March item of the month that I bought rather than taking that money from my budget which would then mean I have more budget to spend on a replacements around getting my nails done or on going out with my friends or whatever so I could use the year of one 
to help out my budget a little bit. That is an option. I'm not saying I'm going to do that, but I can use it that way if I choose. And yeah, I think that is everything that I need to tell you and to lay out about my year of one. I am excited for this year's project. I think in a way it's actually going to be a lot harder than a no by year because I'm a very all or nothing person and I feel like last year when I was on my no buy it almost in a way as much as I could covet things and I did still want things and I was desperate to get certain things at times it was almost it was always like this is not going to happen like there was a very firm rule in place that even when I wanted something and I was pining for things and I was like why can't I buy this because I'm on a no buy and it's so and you know such an injustice that I have done this to myself optionally you know like my inner child definitely had a couple of tantrums last year but it was very much like I'm not buying anything and that is the rule whereas this year the rule has loosened a little bit so I'm allowed one thing a month but I think I'll find it more difficult to buy just one thing and stop than I actually found it overall to just not do it for a year. I feel like I saw that last year when I, whenever I started buying things, particularly if I was buying gifts for other people, it got me into, as soon as I started it, I wanted more of it. So I feel like moderation is what I am not good at. So I actually think this year, as much as I'm very excited for it, and I think it's gonna be really interesting, I think it's going to be harder for me than last year. I think moderation is going to be a much harder thing for me to manage than just not buying anything because just not buying anything to a point stopped my brain from needing to be engaged with the consuming side of things whereas engaging my brain to con in the consumer side of things and then trying to unengage it I think and that is what I need to manage <laughs> if I want to really go forward and ever be able to get to a point where I can buy things without feeling that I need to be on a structured way of controlling my buying is that muscle of opening the gate and shutting the gate rather than just saying it's shut or it's open which is you know beforehand the gate was open and I was buying far too much stuff in a very problematic way then the gate shut and that was quite simple. I feel like this is this is my gate opening and shutting maneuver. Um, this is going to be more difficult. I am positive of that already, but hopefully it will be interesting. Thank you very much for watching to the end of this video, if you have done. Um, and the other thing just before I go, in terms of my year of one, my plans for content are that I will do a monthly haul video where I will talk about whatever item I have decided to buy that month and I will talk about all the other things that I decided to buy and what my processes were in making the decisions of that I did about things to buy. So I'm going to do my haul video every month and I'm going to do my money diary video every month in terms of my budget. And then I do also have other, I'm going to do another project pan this year, so the we regular project pan um, content. And I have, I've planned videos, I've actually planned a video for every week this year so there should be a video every single Sunday because I have a content plan this year so all I need to do is find the time easier said than done but in theory all I need to do is find the time to actually film but the thing is as much as this is a hobby for me and I do it because I enjoy it I lost so many subscribers last year which makes sense because I went from being a channel where I was doing hauls and you know constantly kind of talking about new releases to completely switching my content so that, that kind of knew that was probably going to happen and my views went down like so so much and again I kind of saw it coming so it is what it is but it is a little bit disheartening it would be nice to hopefully think that that has maybe tailed off that I've now lost everyone that I was going to lose by doing that change in direction over the year and I would like to be able to maybe start building my channel up a bit this year. But I feel like building a channel 
really only comes if it's like an interactive process so I could make 52 videos this year but if they're not 52 videos that you want to see what's the point kind of thing because I'm making these videos to put them out and if nobody's watching them it just gets more and more disheartening kind of thing so as much as I obviously I'm not going to start doing content that I don't want to do and obviously whatever content I produce has to kind of come in line with my overall projects, my overall ethos and my overall approach to life these days which is at odds with a lot of the content that is popular in YouTube sadly. I still want to produce content that people want to watch. So basically let me know what you want to see this year. Let me know what you want more of, let me know what is it that when it pops up in your subs- what types- even if they're not videos that I do, what types of videos is it that when they pop up in your subscription box you're instantly like I want to watch that. Because yeah I want to produce content that people want to watch and I don't know what it is you guys want to watch if you don't tell me so I'm asking what do you want to see this year in relation to the year of one or completely left wing not in relation to the year of one. Just to address one of the things I have had requests for and I am mulling over what I want to do about it is food diary videos so if you are an OG subscriber you might know that I used to do food content and particularly weight loss food content. Please skip this if this is going to be triggering for you. I was on Slimming World and I did Slimming World food diaries and they were some of my most popular videos in terms of views, in terms of at any point if I was making money on YouTube it was because of Slimming World food diaries. I don't go to Slimming World anymore but I still cook a lot the way that I did with Slimming World. I still I, I still taken a lot of the principles and what I learned there about food and ironically I've found since I stopped going to the meetings I, and have just sort of adapted it into eating in a way that pleases me um, I've lost way more weight than I ever did when I was sitting in a meeting every single week. I might do food diary videos but I think if I do them and this, this is where I'm completely conflicted is that I don't feel they belong on this channel and I don't want them in this channel because I one of the things I was always feeling guilty about was whether they were triggering for people who were subscribed to my channel for other content because you know obviously as soon as you see Slimming World and weight loss and whatever it's triggering for people that it's triggering for. So I feel like if I was going to start doing food content it would be on a different channel and I don't honestly know if I would be doing it because I, I kind of eat in a Slimming World way but don't eat in a Slimming World way and I'm not a member and I don't have access to tools to be able to like look up values of things that you do need to value um, and I, I don't know if I agree with it or not. I'm still honestly trying to figure out in my own headspace where I am with food but if it is something you would like to see please let me know because I want to know if it would be worthwhile doing it if people are still interested in it but if I am going to do it it'll be on a different channel and if I start another channel my main focus will be this channel so I will do food diaries or food videos or whatever on this other channel that I might start as a sideline so they wouldn't be regular, they wouldn't necessarily be weekly, like I, I don't know how I would approach it if I was going to do it but let me know is it something that you would be keen to see me bring back even if I brought it back on a different channel. I know Food Diaries are something that a lot of people subscribe to me to for in the first place so definitively if that was all you were subscribed to me for it's not going to be on this channel if I do start doing them again and um, so please obviously feel free to unsubscribe as much as I would I don't want you to unsubscribe and I would hope if you watched the end of this video that other content is of interest enough to you to make you stick around but yeah let me know if that is something you'd like to see I'm not saying I'm definitely going to do it because I feel like stopping putting my food online really was part of what helped me finally actually eat for myself and eat in a way that actually suited me and 
probably is why I've lost weight if I'm totally honest. So I, I don't know how I feel about it but I know it has been requested and I'm taking that on board. So yeah, there we go. That's that's everything I've got to say at the moment about food. Is just let me know what is your feedback on any kind of video that you would like to see. Thank you very much for watching this. Hope you've enjoyed it and I will speak to you in my next video. Bye.